You had the thing with Elon's daughter recently come out where she referenced you in her thread. Uh, you got the fact that me? you... My name personally, Adrian, right? Yep. Is that correct? Adrian Dittman, yep. What? That's wild. You also sound, uh, you have all the same hobbies and interests and everything else. You know what you should do? You should try to do a 50,000 sub drive on YouTube and you should do a face reveal at 50,000 subs. <laughs> you should stream with a webcam. I bet you'd get a lot of people subscribing. If you're worried about a lot of the real life uh, fallout from potentially revealing who you are, do you have strong opinions about the fact that it seems like Libs of TikTok has like, is officially sanctioned by X to basically <laughs> dox and destroy the lives of anybody that they decide to post on that X account? I went to make a video on you. No, 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 hold on, wait, wait, wait. Don't call it semantics, it's essential. The not Elon guy wants to chat soon. I need to watch this real quick, hold on. Hello, hello. Yo, what's up, man? Uh, Can you hear me? Yep, just doing, uh, you know, signal processing streams. <laughs> yeah, true, true. I see you're preparing uh, for that little debate with uh, Voorhees. Um, oh, on the Gen 6 stuff? Oh, I don't need to prepare for that. We'll see yeah. how that goes. Yeah, that guy's going to be interesting. I've heard him speak in a couple of spaces, so yeah, yeah sure. Uh, it's kind of interesting to talk to you again, because, I mean, the last time we had a conversation was kind of a debate. Even though I have to say the intent of the discussion uh, with you was not really a debate. That was more like baiting, in a sense, because I wanted to just have an answer to a question in regards to basically think with a dead guy. So... Okay. I decided, hey, what's the best way to actually get a direct answer? So I'm just going to do that instead. So I didn't really want to debate you at all. I just wanted to answer to a question. So it was more like an interview because it, it, from the perspective of a debate, I absolutely got cooked. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no way forward for that. Sure. I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I mean, I also have normal conversations, too. They're not always debates, but there are some topics that I obviously look to debate on and other things that I'm willing to just have conversations on. But mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's why I decided, hey, man, uh, what if we just uh, had a normal conversation? So it's kind of cool, something refreshing. Um, I got to ask, what do you usually do for fun? You know, like, if you're not streaming or anything, like, what do you do for fun to, like, chill out and unplug from reality? Um, I don't know. Honestly, I'd super enjoy it. Like, I prioritize for my work the things that I enjoy doing. So, I like, I may, my whole life basically revolves around my work. But I, like, enjoy all of it, so it's fun for me. It's like, when I'm not streaming, if I'm traveling somewhere, like, I don't mind, like, reading books or reading papers or reading Supreme Court cases um, or, you know, like, doing emails to set up debates or interviews or talking to employees or podcast stuff or whatever. Yeah, it's just all, like, a lot of, a lot of fun for me, yeah. So you enjoy it so much that it basically doesn't feel like it's actually work. It's just something that you kind of... This, this is how you chill, essentially, right? Which is something that directly bleeds into what is your professional life, right? Yeah, I would say that, like, my chilling would just be, like, doing a lazy stream or something, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I like that. I kind of relate to that at the same time as well. It's like my version of chill is to try and read as much as possible, uh, try to find, you know, accuracy. Because, you know, when you do um, breaking news on X... The problem is a lot of people tend to spread false information as well. Just kind of like pollutes the data set and it's annoying as shit. They kind of have to like do a lot of research in the background. I do this thing as a hobby, which is like meme hunting essentially to just try and find the exact origin point of a meme. And that usually helps you kind of like track the origin point for specific types of news. Like for instance, there was this, um, you know, I'm pretty sure you're aware of that. The opening of the Olympic games was very controversial because of how it was uh, displayed, you know, the display of the feast. And then people were basically posting videos that were not related to that, saying that this was like a response to that opening. So I did like kind of trace that down. There was lots of community notes that came afterwards, kind of shut down and quickly. But I got to ask, what were your thoughts on the opening of the Olympic games in Paris? Uh, I'm going to be honest, I fucking hate breaking news, and I also hate, like, culture shit, so I, don't, I didn't even watch it. I didn't watch it. I don't even know what the thing is. Is it basically any time, like, people start fighting about, like, woke or not woke shit, I just immediately don't give a fuck. So I, what, tell me what happened. What, or what are people so mad about? You're gonna, oh, and then also as a quick thing, um, I have a talk that I'm supposed to do with somebody in 30 minutes, so, so in case you feel like I'm not trying to run away, but... Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, so what was basically yeah, so what it was... About. Yeah, no, no, all good, all good. Uh, basically, what it was was a display. You know, of course, you know the biblical feast, as we all know, uh, that uh, painting that we're familiar with, uh, 
what was interesting is the people who were portraying that were all uh, drag queens and perhaps we were not not sure what their other identities were, but it was basically a display in the sense where basically and also a person was kind of put at the center of the display, almost like food for some reason. It was really weird, and people had a very adverse reaction to this. Uh, basically stating that it was a, that they were making a mockery of Christianity. And that's the thing that then caused next level amounts of controversy to the point that basically um, the Olympic Games, I think, I think they had to issue an apology, but that wasn't received well either. <laughs> so I'm not sure what you make of that. Okay, wait, can you... So they had an opening ceremony with drag queens. Why, why does that make people mad? Or No, no, like this here. Uh, let me show you a picture if I can find it. Um, give me a second. Um, okay, so it looked like the Last Supper, but with drag. Yeah. Yes. Somebody said to be clear, it was replicating the Feast of Dionysus from Greek mythology, not the Christ feast. Is it, yes. Dude? Yeah. There you go. This. This is kind of like the parallel that, that was being drawn. So you see that image, and then of course you see the image below that, and that's the thing that then basically caused the adverse reaction. Um. Hold on. I sent it on Discord. Yeah. I'm trying to see what the... Let me open your thing for a stream. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so they felt like this top thing was making fun of the Last Supper. Um, yes. Okay, and people, they claim that they were doing a feasting scene for Dionysus. Okay. Mm -hmm. And people were, I guess, really mad at this? Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I thought you were aware of this already, but I mean... No, I've heard really people care. talk about it. I just haven't, yeah, I just haven't followed it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. And I think there was also um, another instance where they were playing heavy metal and there was like a... Oh, it's weird. Okay. People got very triggered at this. I don't really care about sports, nor do I really care to watch the Olympics. I guess, you know, the Olympics are kind of, you know, the... We're, we're, we're the peak of humanity in terms of physicality is supposed to be displayed, mm -hmm. but in reality, I really don't care about such things. I care about engineering and, you know, having interesting conversations, perhaps more more so, and kind of like watching those interesting conversations happen. Sure. You can not care about it, but it's probably like a good thing, right? That like all the countries get together and then like you have your best athletes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kind of 100%, 100%. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I it's probably... a nice call to gathering as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a nice cool the gathering. Like, say, for instance, you're in a pub or something, or you have like a family event. Like, I, I won't deny it causes it's it's good for it's 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 good for people, right? I mean, of course, you know, you can be an exception and you don't really uh, li like this or kind of relate to it. But I think for a lot of people, it's actually really cool to see, and it's nice. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's I think it's important. By and large, I think it's actually important. Okay, because it's a cool gathering. We yeah. all can use a little bit of that. Yeah, I probably agree. Yeah. Mm. Um. Another thing I gotta ask: What do you eat? Like, what's your preferred diet? It's a weird question, I know, but um, I have a cook that makes something for me um, every day, mm. uh, and then I usually I like drink like a Red Bull, drink a Soylent, and then I usually eat whatever meal he makes. And I think I typically just eat like one big meal a day, but it's nothing like super strict. Probably just, yeah. Interesting. Is it like a? Is it more? vegetarian or is it like more no just based? ordinary it, it'll be like probably like a meat vegetable and um like a protein yeah. a vegetable and a uh, carb or whatever it's like an average ordinary american meal oh i like that that's very nice very balanced i thought that was going to be uh <laughs> i thought i thought it was going to be uh, something a bit more extreme i kind of err to the extreme i do more carnivore based i kind of feel like that's very efficient um you actually don't have to eat that much but you kind of have to, to enter ketosis, you have to have kind of a strict diet in the sense, right? Like cut our sugars mostly um, and stuff like that. So it's it requires a different type of discipline. So if you wanted to actually enjoy like the process of eating, that's probably not the best diet to pick. Although I'm a very simple person, so I just pick that. And I think it's it, it works out very well for me. I can uh, basically stay, stay awake uh, for practically uh, longer periods of time than mostly anyone else. And really need like four hours of sleep and everything still works out fine. I don't feel any decrease in energy. Ever since I've done this, it's amazing. Where do you get all of your different meats from, or how, what kind of meats are you eating? Uh, pr primarily like sirloin. I think that that was pretty nice. I tried to get it from local farmers as much as possible, um, because you know I, I like to support them. It's important. And then I eat a shit ton of butter along with it, because that's kind of like what you have to do. You need to eat a lot of butter, not just for satiety, but also for um, 
Um, also, also to get kind of like for vitamins and such, right? Nutrients. Do you have? Do you get? Don't you need other? Do you have to eat like vegetables and everything as well, or? Oh, not really, not really. Although sometimes I do eat those uh, as well. Like sometimes, for instance, you'd need uh, vit vitamin C, so you'd eat like an orange or something like that, or just eat lemons. Interesting. I feel like you would be super nutrient deficient on that diet, but. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a bit of a deeper science on that that you kind of like have to get into. There's some supplementation that you'd uh, have to do at some points, but I kind of feel like you could balance that all out. Yeah, I've done a decent amount of research on it because because Peterson brought this up before and I wanted to fight with him on it because I hate Jordan Peterson. Um, <laughs> but when I uh, did more reading on it for uh, for a lot of the carnivore diets, the case studies are very limited, but the Inuit or the... Um, Eskimos, I don't know what you call them now, but they study their people's diets. Uh, but the way that they typically make those carnivore diets work is when they say that they eat only meat, they eat like a, a variety of meats. So like they'll eat like livers and kidneys and other things. And through eating all the different types of meats of the animal, they're able to, um, to basically meet all of their daily nutrients, which was surprising. But I don't know if you can do it just eating like sirloins or like, like red meat or whatever. I feel like sure. you'd have to eat like a greater variety of things, but, uh, but I don't know. Oh well, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. I, I sometimes also eat fish and such in between as well. Just kind of, kind of like any any type of meat will do. Okay. And it just kind of averages out throughout the week, really. So there's not really that much of a strict. I mean, primarily I eat these sirloins because they're easy to make and easy to acquire. Mm -hmm. But then there's like different kinds of meat that I'll also eat as well. Sometimes also a little bit of liver, that kind of stuff. Whatever really, uh, like whatever really I come across that's fresh. Basically. You're not, and you're not worried at all about the long term impact of sleep deprivation. Uh, that, that, that is concerning. I've also noticed that that is not, not affecting me, me, uh, positively, but for now I kind of, I, I kind of stick to that in a sense because I have a lot of things to do and I need to fit that in. Eventually I'll kind of like balance that out back to something that's more normal. But right now, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I need to do. I have basically two different jobs and I do this, the whole X thing on the side as well, which is like a, a third job almost. And so to do this and to network with people to just basically get growth because I really do want to grow and I want to, you know, break beyond certain barriers. It requires that kind of effort for me personally. So yeah. I have and no idea why I do you don't, I just feel like it's You're not ever worried about like sacrifices to, I, I don't know. I'm assuming you're decently well off financially. I could be wrong on that, but assuming you are, um, you're not worried that at some point like trading lifespan or health span for a little bit more financial or whatever other type of success is like a not good trade that doesn't factor in or you don't care about it as much or i i, th I think the imp i think the impact is uh not as heavy it just depends on how long you do it for and how much you do it for like if, if your body is basically telling you yeah man i'm not feeling well if you feel like your mental uh faculties are suffering that's probably your, uh the time where you say okay you know what i'll have to change some things you know what i mean hmm I disagree, but right I, I, mean, I could be wrong, it. but, um, it's the, uh, have you, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't recommend, I don't recommend anyone do what I do. I, I highly recommend not doing it actually. <laughs> oh, sure, fact. Yeah. This is not a thing that you should do. Well, I was going to say yeah, one, of the things that, um, one thing I noticed in college, I went to school for a few years for music. Um, I had to drop out because I was working, mm -hmm. but when I was in school for music, one of the things that I noticed is, um, at some point because of my work schedule, I had to shift my practicing at night. And I noticed that, um, as the night went on before I ever had the physical feeling of feeling tired, there were, uh, musical passages that I couldn't play at the same speed. Um, you'll use a metronome for tempo. Sure. I couldn't play them at the same tempo as I could. And I'd notice that like anywhere from like 30 to 60 minutes before I would actually physically feel tired, I would have like a degrading of performance. And it was one of the first times in my life I started to wonder, I was like, I wonder if lack of sleep can mess with you before you're even like cognizant of it messing with you. Um, and then I've looked up like. It sounds like if, if you're like messing with sleep, I'm sure you've looked up like the Uberman cycle and everything else. And I've looked up like polyphasic yes. or biphasic sleeping and they all seem incredibly attractive. But um, the two things that I think of is that one, there are no long-term health effects on it. And two, I feel like I'd always look to the military for like sleep hacks. Like if there was a way to reliably hack mm -hmm. your sleep, I feel like the military at the very least would be doing it. Like every soldier would yeah. be on a biphasic sleep schedule because you would get so much more productivity out of your soldiers. But uh, that's kind of what I think of it as. Interesting. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think it would be much more sustainable to do it that way. I mean, again, you know, what I'm doing is is not necessarily sustainable for now. Mm -hmm. It's just something that I have to do within a certain period of time, I feel like. And then basically I get to the point where I can kind of plateau that out and take it easy and just kind of use that as a foundation to work off of. Sure. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. like I have this goal that by the end of the first year of basically starting to do stuff on X, I wanted to kind of like reach 100K 
for following. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just kind of like work as hard as I can on that to expand that. Also doing ridiculous things. Like it, it, it's, it's actually funny. The type of situations that I find myself in, there's mostly, it's, it's all improvised. I never really prepare for anything. I can't really prepare for anything. It's even funny with you, for instance. I, haven't heard of, I hadn't heard of you up until a month before we had that, we had that space. Mm-hmm. And basically, that was just, you were just like brought up by a friend who was explaining what you were doing. I was like, oh, this is interesting. And then that was just a single day where we had, we had that conversation about who you were. I was like, okay, cool, cool. And they kind of like forgot about that. And then, of course, you know, the controversy started. And I said, okay, look, cool, let's do a, let's do a debate. And it was like completely unprepared, no idea what really to expect. There's a lot of people warning me and telling me that you steamroll. And I'm like, I kind of feel like the steamrolling thing is a result of people talking too much and putting too many points out and then basically not being able to kind of have those points be answered. Like I kind of noticed you do the thing with uh, Protocol in MySpace where he was bringing out like something such as six points and you were writing all of them down and then addressing them one by one in great detail. And then this guy felt like you were steamrolling. In reality, you weren't steamrolling at all. You were just basically taking what he was saying and addressing every single point, right? Which is quite odd and quite impressive, I would say. But, you know, it's not steamrolling, right? It's just a sure, conversation. Yeah, it's, it's annoying because people accuse me of not paying attention, not listening when I'm literally, yeah, you can just look at my streamers writing down oh, yeah. things. But then when I start to respond one at a time, there's a, there's a form of argumentation called a gish gallop where the goal is to like lay down like five or 10 bad arguments all at the same time. And then your opponent can never really like respond to all of them. And I notice that when somebody wants to lay yeah. out four or five or six points that when I write them all down and respond to them, they want to like focus on the first thing that I say, which is fine. I don't mind going point by point through an argument, but I'm not going to do that after you've had the ability to, in the mind of the audience, to lay out your entire argument right. and I can't lay out an entire counter argument. So I usually, yeah. Do you sometimes use that? Are, do you sometimes use that as well as a tool? Use what? Uh, the, 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 the thing that you just mentioned, I'm sorry, I couldn't repeat oh, the Gish technical. Gallop. Um, no, I tried pretty hard. I like, I read out all my notes before a debate. I'll talk about my rhetorical strategies going in. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll review them. Like I'm open on my stream all the time to talk about anything. If anybody wants to come back and have a conversation, like I try to be pretty open and honest with all my stuff. Like if you really wanted to prepare against me for, for a debate, you just have to watch my stream like a few days before. And I'm writing out like, here's all my notes. This is the research I'm using. Like I literally have a folder of, in Obsidian that's publicly available on my website called debate prep. It goes over like all of my stuff. Like, yeah, I try pretty hard. I mean, like, I'm not perfect. There are times where I make mistakes or fuck up, or I might get too mo- emotionally invested in something in the heat of the moment and not give a point that I probably should have in retrospect. But for the most part, I try pretty hard to be truth seeking, as all the centrists like to say they are. <laughs> truth seeking, I love how you like slowed down for that one. That was funny. Wow. Yeah, that's nice. Actually, I think that's really impressive. It's cool. This is the kind of part of the destiny that I'd want actually more people to see, especially like on X. You know, what you just explained, because I think that's really cool. You should like clip this part or somebody should clip this part and post that because that's really good. I think that's really cool. Kind of gives more insight as to, you know, kind of who you are and, you know, how you got to where you are, right? Because many people just assume that you kind of got to where you are just because of controversy alone. But in order to be as big as you are, you actually have to put in a lot of effort into a given thing. And clout alone based on negativity just does not does not sustain that kind of growth. Yeah, I think you could probably you can grow really big doing that, but it's always going to be temporary, right? Yeah, like I have, um, I've been doing this for fifteen years, so I think I've got some longevity. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, hundred percent. If you if you're able to stay relevant for fifteen years on the internet, you're doing something right. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> memes die, right? So if you don't evolve and you're not able to improve, then of course you'll you'll be left behind, like all those many YouTubers. I mean, there's like literally YouTube channels that are creating video essays on the downfall of certain YouTube creators, and the patterns all the same, right? They start out with the desire to gain clout by spreading negativity, then they get, attain it, but then they have to kind of like one up the thing that they already did, making the next thing more extreme than the previous and that eventually eventually ends up destroying them mm-hmm. yeah they, yeah there's a lot of predictable patterns that people fall into but i mean i guess they must not i guess when you're in that pattern right when you're being emotional about a thing it's hard to perceive that you are so you probably fall into them without realizing it and then by the time you do I, apparently it's too late for a lot of people but you know um yeah. okay wait okay i'm curious because i have to ask obviously I, you kind of addressed this right you had the thing with Elon's mm-hmm. daughter recently come out where she referenced you in her thread. Uh, you got the fact that me? you... My you, name personally, Adrian, right? Yep. Is that correct? Adrian Dittman, yep. What? <laughs> she did? <laughs> she that's did wild. That's the first time I'm hearing of this. Could you like... Oh, wow. That's wild. You also sound... Uh, you have all the same hobbies and interests and everything else. You know what you should do? You should try to do a... 
50,000 sub drive on YouTube and you should do a face reveal at 50,000 subs. You should stream with a webcam. I bet you'd get a lot of people subscribing. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Well, I mean, the rest of your identity is kind of a kind of an issue. There's a reason why I don't want to show my face. It's not because, uh, it's not really because these people could cause me harm in real life. It's just something I don't really feel comfortable with, knowing the types of people who are on the internet. You know what I mean? I, I, I got to ask, like, how exactly is the, uh, how exactly did you get to the point of, you know, being comfortable with your face being on the internet? Um, I was kind of molded this way. I think through my life experiences, I was kind of like bred to be this person before streaming on the internet even kind of came about. Um, I think that there's, I think the people that are really big into this, there's probably something that's already happened in, in the, um, in, in like the environment of the child, like growing up. Cause I have a hard time thinking that an ordinary person could be okay coming onto the internet and then dealing with all of the insane feedback you get. I think most people aren't wired for yes. that. Like I think most healthy people aren't. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, look, it's, it's, it's absolutely insane that what people will say, you will truly see the worst and the best of humanity when you're on the internet and you're big. And to kind of like sustain that, everybody wants to grow, everybody wants to have the big numbers, but nobody wants to, to deal with the consequences of that. Because a lot of, uh, some of the small aspects of those big numbers are going to be people who do not like you at all. Right? And for me, it's actually worse because, um, well, probably not worse. I mean, for me, it's, 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 it's bad in a different way, wherein you, of course, get the people who are jealous of success. Those are, that's the average. Um, but I also get the people who don't like Elon as well. So, so whoever do, that dislikes Elon, uh, by default, dislikes me as well because of the obvious parallels, right? Sure. Even though there isn't anything, but really that just, like, I mean, there, there are certain similarities and people make the effort to point those similarities out. They don't actually focus on the differences. Like say, for instance, uh, one of the key differences would be speech, right? Our speech patterns are similar, but I speak faster. That's That's one thing that... You know, I, I, I kind of feel like I'd have to point out, sure, I have stammering as well, but that's because I'm autistic, right? This is the same thing. He's autistic, I'm autistic. I'm just different in terms of me being able to basically do uh, public speaking, right? Because I kind of tend to speak quick and be able to articulate my point in great detail without kind of, you know, stammering too much. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. so that's do a key you... difference for people who have to understand. Sure, okay. It's a difference. Do you think... Um... If you're worried about a lot of the real life uh, fallout from potentially revealing who you are, do you have strong opinions about the fact that it seems like libs of TikTok has like is officially sanctioned by X to basically <laughs> dox and destroy the lives of anybody that they decide to post on that X account? Uh, I mean, that's actually a really good point. I don't actually, th um, it's, 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 there, there's, a, there's a fine line here. It's not technically doxing what this person was doing, right? What they were doing is actually whether they're just taking publicly available information, such as, you know, the fact that these people were commenting um, a certain way publicly on the internet, on posts, for instance, right? And they were taking that and just basically saying, here, are, are you as a company, are you comfortable having this person work with you? Now, of course, you know, doing this, I wouldn't do this myself. I think that's an ethical concern. But technically speaking, it's, it's a, it's a gray area. It's a really annoying gray area. You know what I mean? Like it's it's technically doxing, but also not at the same time. I kind of feel like it errs towards the not a lot more than towards the it is. You know what I mean? Just okay. So I'm curious. Backing up because I'm a very like. An Do you ever say how old you are, or is that a? I kind of kind of. I kind of reveal it sometimes. Sure. Okay. Oh, yeah, like you don't have to if you don't mind. I'm 35. Um, I've been on the internet for a long time. Cool. I've seen like a lot of these definitions like come and go and change and evolve over time. In your mind, mm -hmm. what is uh, what is doxing to you? Uh, if 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 the identity of an individual has if an identity of the individual has not been published before by the individual themselves, um, say for instance, you know, you use your personal face and ID, and we're like kind of where you work. So imagine you have like a LinkedIn profile, right? Mm -hmm. You say who you are, where you work, what your work history is. If that's public, then if somebody like kind of goes to that and says, yeah, that's your public information, then the, <laughs> that's kind of an issue, right? But if they they associate this with an anonymized identity, because it's like, okay, let, let, me, uh, let me kind of rephrase that. Um, so you have public information, right? You have the LinkedIn account. If I were to have something like that for say an X account and it's all my public information is on there, my work mm -hmm. history, my name, whatever, whatnot, and then we're to then go on a post somewhere and comment some really fucked up stuff and that company were then to say, you know, we can't really associate with this because not even politically speaking, this is bad, but just bad overall because you just issued a death threat, technically speaking, or you advocated for someone's death, we're gonna have to fire you, right? I don't think that, and if somebody points this out, that me as a person with this profile has said this, then, you know, that's just consequences of the action, right? If you, for instance, now were to say there's an anonymized account and you were to say somehow find the identity of that anonymized account and link that, that's doxing, in my opinion. 
So if your identity is already known on that account, you can like show the identity and you're using that account where you show the identity to make a certain opinion public, then if you're associated with that opinion personally, then that's just the way it is, right? But again, if you like reveal the information of an anonymized account, that's doxing, hmm. if that makes sense. Okay, I kind of understand what you're saying. I feel like I have a simpler and more intuitive and I, and I think a more honest definition, mm -hmm. not that you're being dishonest, but in terms of like how people like see doxing, I, the way that I would view it is I think that Doxing is any time you aggregate uh, personally identifiable information for the intent to harm somebody. I think that's doxing. Um, absent like a, a, a great public interest. Uh, the public interest part is important. So for instance, let's say that somebody has made um, a couple posts on Reddit where they kind of like reveal their identity and they say that they have a boyfriend um, and it's a guy. Let's say that somebody has made um, a few posts on Facebook where they have their real name and they're like hanging out with their family in Indiana. And then let's say somebody on Twitter um, starts tweeting and they say, I don't like the Trump administration's uh, LGBT policies or whatever bullshit, right? Let's say somebody mm -hmm. digs through their profiles online and they see the stuff that they stated publicly and they're able to bring it all together on Twitter. They say, oh, you're this person and you live here and you're hiding the fact that you're gay and that's why you're so unhappy with these things. I would consider something like that to be doxing because you've taken personally identifiable information and now you've aggregated it into one area for the purposes of harassing or harming a person. Um, even if it was available publicly before, I think that the intentionality is important when people publish stuff. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I'd largely agree with you on that. But again, you know, that's the that's the greater definition that I was kind of referring to, right? Morally speaking, what you just explained is basically think that's how it should go. But I mean, look, it's kind of like a conflict in a sense, right? Um, whether or not you should be part of that conflict is entirely up for debate, literally. <laughs> but yeah, I wouldn't want to do that myself. I wouldn't do that with this amount of power that, say, for instance, those of TikTok has. Mm -hmm. But I mean, hey, they can do whatever they want, and I guess it's still technically in the gray area. It's it's just weird, you know what I mean? Like it's 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 a it's a gray area that I think is not is not possible. It's just war, and war is ugly. That's kind of how I see. Yeah, it. I guess. But I mean, like the idea of having war where you're trying to like find like every single individual in real life whose political opinions you don't like. Not you personally, I'm sorry, but somebody doesn't like, and then they're like publishing them online. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of a spooky. Uh, I feel like it's a spooky. It's like a chilling effect, right? Well, now people are scared to publish anything or write anything across any account because somebody might show up in real life and record you at your job, and then yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Well, um, I mean, I think it's just been kind of the same across the board for everyone, no matter what political opinion they've had. I think if you had erred towards a very particular opinion in the past, then that would have happened by default. Say, for instance, you're a Trump supporter, but you don't actually voice this opinion at work, nor does this opinion affect how you do work. Um, but then you still get fired from a job for no reason, essentially, right? So this is something that happened mm -hmm. historically. Yeah. That's kind of an issue as well. So I'd say, yeah, by and large, I would disagree with uh, being fired for political opinions if the political opinion itself does not impact the job. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that would be a big issue. I don't like that. Um, do you, I'm curious, do you have a stance on, because Elon banned an account that was just posting where his uh, airplane was flying. And I, my understanding is that information is essentially available publicly. Um, all air traffic is. Do you think that that was wrong for him to ban that if it's just posting, if somebody was just posting his flights, basically? I think information such as that shouldn't be public in the first place. That's kind of where I think, I mean, look at this person. He's a very high... Uh, he, he's a person who's targeted by various many people, right? So there's a lot of people who'd have, who'd want harm or just want to stalk him. So imagine if you could basically track that person's every move to a remarkable degree of accuracy. You know exactly where they're going to be, even before they themselves are there. So you could like prepare ahead of time. That's that's really <laughs> that that's 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 a threat. So I, I would say pu information like that shouldn't be public in the first place, like at all. Mm -hmm. That's that's kind of my stance on that. And so him banning that because basically it was just stalking his exact location constantly. I think that was the right thing to do, in my opinion. I don't I, I necessarily don't even disagree with you, um, unless somebody, maybe somebody can give me a strong yeah. argument for why a lot of that air traffic is public. I don't necessarily disagree with you, but I feel like that's essentially the exact same thing then that happens with that libs of TikTok account, because the goal is they mm -hmm. basically take a person who's now been super blown up publicly is known. People can easily find like the address and like what, where they might be a teacher and everything else. And then it's for the purpose of like directing mm -hmm. harassment. And I'm sure that person for the first time in their life is now like starting to be fearful that people are going to show up or do crazy things to them, which is why it seems hard to ban one and not the other is my feel feeling. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, true. If, if now people on the internet decide to then basically find that person's location with, like, say, for instance, what Lipless TikTok was doing wasn't actually revealing their exact location in a sense. Of course, you can infer location. Anyone can do this, actually. This is also why I don't recommend that anyone posts, say, a picture of where they're at currently. Like, say, imagine you're just at a hotel and you're chilling and you're taking a picture of, say, your surroundings. Like, a person can literally find you in minutes. Actually, it, it, I think it's easier for people on the internet to find you than it is for the government to find you, based on the fact that you can like go through different types of channels, not just the official channels. I think the official channels actually have more latency and more lag than basically finding a person based on the image in their surroundings alone, which is wild, right? So I guess I th that is an issue, right? But then again, I would also recommend that if you are going to do anything that's on the internet that could become public, like say, for instance, voice your opinion on, you know, particular things such as the assassination of you know former president, mm -hmm. then probably do so under an anonymized account. Or if you know that that is very violent what you're about to say just don't say it at all i think some things just ought not to be said because like basically responsibility right just because you have free speech and just because you can say a certain thing doesn't mean that you should you know what i mean while i agree with that that like freedom of speech is not freedom from consequences or just because you have the freedom of speech you shouldn't necessarily say a thing um, i guess my two issues there is that one this is an irrelevant thing but it's an appeal to hypocrisy is that it seems like conservatives were really upset when the left was trying to like woke scold them on everything and get people kicked out of schools but then the second thing is is i feel like there is a um when you talk about like appropriateness right if you have a partner mm -hmm. Um, I imagine there's things that you would say to your romantic partner, especially sexual things that would be inappropriate to say to their parents, <laughs> right? Or your yes, parents yes. or like in the group of friends, right? Or there might be conversations mm -hmm. you have with your friends that would be really inappropriate to have in front of a coworker, in front of your boss. I think the thing that I don't like yes. about the internet is that right now people are turning every single potential thing you post on the internet as though it's the same as presenting it in like the widest forum mm -hmm. for infinite scrutiny possible. Because so many things, like I'm sure we both know that probably half of Americans have said like morally impeded teachable things on their Facebook posts. But the reality is, is that like people just aren't usually looking that closely. And the idea of taking an account and putting it under a microscope and then blowing it up to a glo uh, global level just seems like really unfair to me. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'd largely agree with you. I think it's a very unnatural consequence in a sense. We've never really had something like this before, where basically anything that you'd say, like if, if people are used to kind of, especially the older generation is used to kind of like meeting up in a spot physically and then talking about a certain thing. It was literally the definition, hey, there's a spot, so we're all going to meet up there physically and have a conversation. They kind of have that same idea still in their head. Uh, as to how our conversation goes, so they type this, this so they type this way online, right? And the, but the problem is, of course, the online is basically a huge public record, which is practically permanent to a certain extent, right? That's kind of the that's kind of the issue. So they would say things a certain way that you really shouldn't say at all, just basically because they're used to this thing. Like, would you agree that that is the case, and that that's, that's kind of an issue? Yeah, it's kind definitely. Of like an unnatural permanence to information. Um. I wouldn't necessarily say an unnatural permanence. I would say there's an unnatural um, uh, recog um, awareness of it. Or, or like, because I think that things are actually surprisingly not as permanent as people thought. Like when accounts drop off the internet, people forget them or whatever. But I think it's more just that anybody can have an opinion about anybody at any point in time. Mm -hmm. Like a long time ago, uh, like if somebody were to publish, uh, you know, this guy, uh, you know, said a racial slur to his classmate. You could publish that in a school newspaper. And I think in that case, right, there were consequences for actions. I think that those consequences are fair. If you do something bad in a given environment, then I think the people in that environment probably have a right to know and maybe you should be punished for it. But the idea that now if you do something, now that spreads to all environments, I think that's I think that's really bad. Um, like I guess for a tech analogy or whatever, like if you do something really bad on a video game and you get banned, I think it's fair to ban you on that video game and even to ban other accounts depending on the severity of the thing, but I don't think you should be banned from all video games. Um, and it seems like that's where our culture is right now, especially with an account like Libs of TikTok, where the idea is if I can find a thing that you said that we politically disagree with, we're going to try to come down and destroy your life in as many ways as possible in order to enforce this ideological orthodoxy onto society. Because if you say anything that we deem as being uh, politically incorrect, we're going to find you and destroy you. And I think that's really scary, the chilling effect there. Interesting, interesting. I'd largely agree. Uh, but I mean, you know, there's, there's certain things that I, I think there's perhaps a you could call it a pain threshold for certain things that you can say where I think certain consequences measured. If I were to, like, say, work at a particular place and I personally have advocated for the fact that an assassin shouldn't have missed their shot of a certain person, knowing for well the chaos that it would cause, um, I personally, I think that that person may not 
may shouldn't, it probably shouldn't work there anymore. You know what I mean? That's, that's a bit of an issue. If you have that kind of in your mind and you're able to kind of like say that publicly and not be afraid of the consequences, whatever, thinking that this is a completely normal thing to say, I think that's kind of an issue, right? It's almost like issuing a death threat, right? That's, there's, well, there's a pain it's... threshold. You can say all kinds of other things, but I think this is like where kind of opinion and advocacy kind of like that there's there's an issue i think there's a difference in what kind of things you can say like if for instance um if you're Mm pro-gay um you shouldn't be canceled right of course and if you're kind of against it in a sense you have some sort of disapproval i shouldn't i don't think you should be canceled either but if you start advocating for the death of certain things that's i think where the problem begins you know what i mean if you actually just exhibit true disgust and probably hate uh towards a certain group of people or just a person in a sense, right? Mm-hmm. I think I think that's where kind of like you enter that threshold, where a certain consequence is actually uh, warranted. You know what I mean? Sure. I I disagree because I think that the First Amendment, I think, and the concept of freedom of speech, the First Amendment doesn't apply to doxing or canceling force, but I think the concept is important. Um, but listen, uh, we can chat again tomorrow or later if you're still awake. I need to run and do sure. another conversation, and then I'm debating that the weirdo conservative guy later, so... Um, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Man. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. This was a really nice conversation. We should definitely have it more often. It's cool. Sure thing. Have fun. Be careful. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, so I got some questions about uh, about uh, the debate you had with the definition guy. Yeah. Just some other, like, uh, Jan 6 shit. Okay. Um. So, one, I, what is the point of arguing over the definition? Like, I get with that guy because he wouldn't, like, allow the conversation to move on and he's acting in bad faith. But I mean, is there a reason why that word is important? Oh, how much time you got? <laughs> well, I mean, is this going to go on for hours or what do, what do you mean? Um, okay. You're American, right? Yeah. God bless. Wait, what state are you from? What kind of American are you? <laughs> I'm a Midwestern. Okay. I'm from Nebraska for 30 years. Are we like Dude, kindred you're my spirits? neighbor. Oh, you... I'm sorry, but there is no good state near Nebraska. And even Nebraska is not a good state. Oh, bro, but you got that mid... All you need is a case of Bush Light, dude. Are you... Am I... Can you say what state you're from? Being really good. Are you... Or do yeah, you, I'll, I'll say I'm from Illinois. Okay. Okay. St. Louis or... No, Missouri. That's Missouri. What's in Illinois? Well, Wait, well, don't tell me! Don't tell me! What is the big city in Illinois? There's at least one of them. What is it? Peoria. <laughs> Wait, Peoria, Illinois is the big one. Hold on. No. Oh, <laughs> it, um, Chicago. F- f- me. Jesus. Jesus Christ. The sign was right. <sighs> Delete that. I, August, you have to scrub this video from the internet. <laughs> oh, my God. Chicago. Holy shit. I, Forget I, I just the wrong lib, dude. No, shut the f- up. F- f- me. Okay. Forget that. Okay. What? Did I say St. Louis? Why did I say that? I mean, it's partially in Illinois. You're kind of right. Yeah, but that's like saying like, can that's like saying Kansas City is in Kansas. Not really, kind of, but yeah. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Okay. Fuck. All right. Get to the point. <clears throat> Why um, is the word insurrection? Yeah, we had a whole ass civil. We, we had a whole ass civil war. Uh, civil war in the United States, right? Where the North fought the South over slavery and all sorts of bullshit and seceding from the Union, right? Mm-hmm. After the Civil War, um, <clears throat> the the people in the government were a little bit weary about, well, um, you know how all these people just rebelled against us and we had a whole Civil War. Should they be allowed to compete or not compete? Should they be allowed to participate in government again? Right. And as part of that, they passed something. OK, the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. They, so they changed the Constitution and they added as part of the Constitution now um, Section three of the 14th Amendment, which basically said that. If you had engaged in insurrection or rebellion, you were no longer allowed to hold office if you had pri- um, previously held office, okay? Okay. Because of this amendment and because of that section, um, do you remember there was big news about how Colorado had kicked Trump off the ballot? Yeah. That's, this is what they were uh, citing to, right? They were citing to, well, there's the 14th Amendment and Section 3, and that gives a qualification for being a uh, president. And if you had previously taken an oath and engaged in insurrection, then you no longer can take another oath. You can't be an office holder again. So Colorado embarked on trying to decide whether or not January 6th was an insurrection insofar as the framers of this amendment had meant. 
And their analysis, they said, well, it was an insurrection. Therefore, we've concluded that Trump can't be listed on our ballot, so we're kicking off the ballot. Now, this, um, this is kind of like why that insurrection language was such a huge deal in the United States is because one, they were going to take Trump off the ballot, and two, there had been at le- there's been at least one local office holder, I believe it was in New Mexico, who was prevented from running again for office because of this um, language in the 14th Amendment as well. So that's why the precise wording and intentionality and everything behind insurrection is so important on a legal level and a procedural level. And then personally, on a moral level, I believe that January 6th, and I think that the facts are indisputable, rises to far more than a riot. Now, whether you want to call it a coup, an insurrection, or a rebellion, it might depend on you know how you delineate you know between these particular terms. But um, I think that insurrection pretty easily and squarely would would yeah would, would describe what happened. So is that why? Is is that why there was no like there's no charge for it because it's just like an amendment saying like if you do insurrection. Like, it's, it's not necessarily like a criminal offense. Okay, so there's a couple things to keep in mind here that are very fucking annoying to me, okay? Okay, so on the first part, there is no, like, formal definition of insurrection in the legal code. Now, people will cite to um, 18 U.S.C. Um, it's not 2383, is it? Oh, maybe it is. People will cite to this, I think. Um well, they'll say whoever incites, sets foot on, insists, or engages in any rebellion or insurrection against the authority of the United States or the laws thereof or gets aid to the country shall be fined under this title in prison, not more for than 10 years. But people are like, oh, well, look, why didn't they charge him with insurrection or rebellion, right? So there's a couple things. So one, insurrection is not strictly defined anywhere in the legal code. There's just a criminal charge for it, okay? But then two, okay, you, ha- okay, I need you to turn your, I need you to turn your law brain on, okay? You get your law brain on? Oh, God, dude, it's pretty empty up there. It's okay, just a little bit, Okay. <laughs> okay. In the United States of America, all right, if, if you want to deprive somebody of their freedoms, they have to be afforded due process. You, you, criminal matters in the United States are a very big deal because it's the state coming in to take away part of your life, liberty, uh, pursuit of happiness. Like they're, they're coming to deprive you of what should be uh, a right that you can't be deprived of. So in the United States, we have criminal courts to deal with this. However, in the United States, you're guaranteed a process where you have a trial by jury where it, it, the onus is on the state to prosecute you and convince a jury beyond a reasonable doubt that you have committed a certain crime. That standard, beyond a reasonable doubt, means that no person, no ordinary person of sound mind could have a reasonable doubt for as to whether or not you had engaged in a particular behavior. So when somebody is talking about a criminal charge, you're proving this way beyond the threshold of any like ordinary thing in society. All of this to say that when somebody says, well, if X, Y, Z had occurred here, why wasn't anybody charged with it? People could not be charged with crimes for a multitude of reasons. In my- yeah, Wasn't the president yeah. of the Confederacy not even charged? Um, probably. Almost I don't know sure. if any- I mean, I don't since know if, high school since I've learned about this, but I, I think that's true. Yeah, I don't know if anybody has been charged with it. I don't think anybody's, by the way, internationally has ever been charged with the war crime so here, of, uh, yeah, with like genocide or whatever, or apartheid even for South Africa. Nobody was charged with that crime at all, yeah. I guess here's my follow-up. Is there is there a point to even arguing it then? Like, all right, he's not going, it's clearly not applying to him. He is running. What's the point of even making the argument? The Well, in my mind, the reason why I think the argument should be made is because that should be in and of itself instantaneously disqualifying of a person for running from office. You tried to lead, you tried to coup the U.S. government, and you led an insurrection on the Capitol building in order to hold on to power. That's like the, it's probably one of the most disqualifying things that you could ever do um, as, as, a, as a president of the United States. There are very few things that would come over that. Well, I mean, I agree with you. I would count it as that, but if it's not being counted in this instant, he is going to run. No conversation's going to flip that. Um, I guess, no, no, the conversation won't, but what I'm saying is- If I were to make the video, what would be the point of me even making that argument, you know? I have no idea. You're a commentary YouTuber. For me, that's not to, um, not to say that like, oh, you're shitty or do this, but for me as a political debater, what I don't like is that in the political sphere, conservatives are really good at playing offense and they never have to answer for anything. And this is what set me off over the Trump, um, quote unquote- What does that mean though? Like give an example. Um... As in, like, after the Trump assassination attempt, right, this is a Republican guy that got shot, okay, because he stood up and filmed Trump after he heard shots, and he got shot by a Republican shooter at a Republican 
fucking event. And somehow the entire media apparatus is staring at liberals saying, wow, you guys keep calling Trump a Nazi. Look at what you've done. And it's time and time and time again, it feels like liberals have to apologize for things or, uh, you know, constantly disavow the crazies on their side, you know, like the crazy trans people. When uh, Biden and everybody were running for president, they had to say, no more rioting, guys. The riots aren't okay. You can't set fire to buildings. It's not okay, guys. But on the Republican side, not only do they not apologize for things, they don't even acknowledge they've ever happened. Nobody on the Republican side talked about the dude that was mailing pipe bombs to people who was a massive fan of Donald Trump. Nobody takes credit for the J6 stuff. They say, they either say it wasn't a big deal or if it was a big deal it's because antifa was there or if it wasn't antifa it was because feds made it happen um they like did they, mitt romney and a bunch of uh republicans like actually say stuff about that though or am i wrong say stuff about what the j6 stuff at the very micro moment in time they did but as time passes when popularity remains with trump they all fall in line okay Like, okay, yeah, and, well, and, and, guess- and then like, yeah, and then, yeah, conservatives call, you know, they call us the party of groomers. They call us like pedophiles. There was the whole um, Gretchen Whitmer plot. They said that, well, that was actually the FBI. They're, like it's thing after thing after thing of them never accepting responsibility or anything. So all I'm saying is that for me personally, I can't argue for you. I don't know what you're going to do. But for me personally, when I go to debate now with conservatives, I need an acknowledgement about J6. We're not going to talk about a single f-ing thing about Biden or Hunter Biden or Kamala or anything. Thing, I don't care until you acknowledge that your president tried to coup the government. And now I want you to tell me why the f- I should take you seriously when you're supporting an insurrectionist who tried to coup the government. It's one of the most anti-American things you could ever do or pro-American, I guess, depending on how you look at it. But at least admit that that was what was going on. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's that's why this is why I've taken up this mantle. And I, and I think that conservatives were allowed to walk away from this far too easily. Like in my world, every single conservative right now in office would never hold office again. Um, not because of any legal decree, but just because people look at them as going like, wow, you really tried to support a guy who tried to coup the government. That's pretty crazy, dog. Like can't have you in office ever again. Yeah. Well, what is, what was surprising about watching that last guy is that it would have been like, uh, the, the definitions guy, mm-hmm. it would have been like a parody. Like I felt like I would have written up about how online politics is perceived, you know, he's like, won't even, uh, give a definition. To the topic like i think at one point you just like muttered a bunch of gibberish and uh well wait why do you think that it, was well it was to prove that he doesn't have any comprehension of the word no no why do you think he was so fixated on the definition because he doesn't want to engage in the topic he why, doesn't want to and why do you think he doesn't want to engage party. in the topic uh well i mean to be fair i don't know this guy so i don't i don't know if i want to be his bad faith but in the moment i perceived it as he either doesn't know anything about it or he knows it's super there you go yep uh, let it get there it's the latter it's always the latter right you don't want to engage in it i mean like if you ever how old are you i'm i'm 47 four are you i can't have your Listen, I don't know how young you are, okay? Date some abusive women or talk to some or, or have some manipulative friends, okay? You see these strategies. This is like one-on-one manipulation, right? It's how conservatives engage, right? If you have done something wrong, um, you don't sit there and try to defend the action, or okay? All you do is you attack, attack, attack. You project, project, project. Um, try to, you know, move on to something else. Yeah, but you never well, actually what's own. The, what's the point? I don't get really what the point, like, I don't know, dude. Maybe I'm too, like, commentary brain. Like, I, I'm not in deep enough. What is the, like, point, though? What does he get from that? Obfuscation. You don't have you know to actually saying? admit that, like, yeah, a really f- up event happened on January sixth. That but was like, the- what do you? What does he? What does he gain from not like acknowledging that the thing exists? You can pretend the Democrats are worse. Is that literally just the point? Yeah, it's team sports. It's one of the drawbacks of a two-party system is it might make us a little bit more um, allegiant to one side and oppositional to the other, maybe. But yeah. Uh, I mean, okay, fuck. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I got to look into the, that guy a little more. I, I seems... mean, like, it, to make it, let me, to, to make it commentary brain, right? If you're, like, a sure. Destiny supporter and evidence comes out, you know, that I'm, like, f***ing two-year-olds, like, why would you still defend me after that? Or why would you say that, oh, oh well, Destiny never actually Oh, because he's, like, that? a stand. Exactly, he's yeah, like because this is, like, okay, you're a guy, you. like, you know, and you identify with him. Like, I'm with the guy that I identify with to be a child rapist right so he's it's either like grown ass man exactly so either they didn't do it or if they you know if they did there was a really good reason or if there wasn't then it doesn't matter or right you just move down the the narcissist prayer basically yeah of course because you identify with that team and you don't want to be in the shitty team or the losing team yeah all right here's a question i got too is what is the point of arguing specifically over the riot specific- i feel like that's the least interesting point of the whole thing um it yeah I thought I made this clear beforehand, like, but maybe I should have like, made wait, this clear when, when it comes to the when it comes to like the riot stuff, which is the majority of what I've seen you. I saw you like uh, your video you posted the day called like 
arguing with tomfoolery or whatever. Yeah, and, okay, uh, hold on. Just, and then you argued with him, and I don't understand the point of even talking about this. Yeah, yeah. This is not the most important part. This is the climax. The only reason why I agreed to argue with Andrew Wilson, okay, because ordinarily he's on my blacklist, okay, because I because I, I know how he debates, and it's just not usually worth my time. The only reason I agreed to do it is because I just wanted to kind of like torture test run through like a, like an insurrection argument, because I know that he'll give me like the strongest version of a bad faith attack against that particular argument. <laughs> but if I'm, seriously, he's, he's very good at it. He's like- Hey, you got what you asked for, man. Yeah, he's like verbally, like he's very verbally adept. You can listen to him. He'll run circles around. Like you should listen to a debate Dave Smith. It was a disaster. Uh, dude, he sounded retarded, bro. Yeah, I, he did, but that's I because- swear I, to God, it that's, was a fucking troll like that's okay point. but that's because i'm extra smart okay listen all right i'm not trying to i'm <laughs> half half joking but also it is true like i'm i'm capable of like like if you listen to me talk to boogie right like i i dismantled boogie but boogie in front of a lot of other people can come off as kind of good job you like, dismantled the mentally ill guy <laughs> fucking great i thought you could win a race against him too hey Dusty. excuse me you guys are the commentary community and you let this guy have a fake cancer diagnosis for two years all right so fuck you all right <laughs> i didn't even think you'd go that far well man. Uh, there you go okay um, okay, but, um, yeah, I just wanted to torture test kind of like the definition of insurrection and see if he had anything I hadn't thought of. But, um, my, my future debates for this particular topic are going to focus way more on the events leading up to it than just the riot absent Trump's behavior, um, afterwards. Yeah. Because I think Trump's behavior is the most important part of all this, but I didn't, we didn't even touch on that really with, uh, Andrew. Well, Wilson, yeah. yeah. Cause I, I guess I feel like, I mean, this is how I view January 6th, the entire, like the whole riot all the way up until... I went to make a video on you and I started like reading through the actual uh, docs and indictment and the Supreme Court and all that shit. Mm -hmm. And it was essentially that, uh, like, I always thought, okay, these are a bunch of people and maybe even Donald Trump, including himself, like thought I legitimately had the, uh, the election. There was some fraud in place or whatever mm -hmm. that had me lose. So I am protesting against that right now by marching the Capitol. Yeah. To me, I think like, that's fine. Like if you generally th genuinely think, uh, a false election happened. You should go protest. Yeah, is how I thought all the way up until, you know, I actually I read into it and how like malicious it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's why I don't really get the point of like. No, no, yeah, yeah. That that, that was just one like hyper specific ultra autistic debate that I wanted over that one thing. That's not what my future combos are going to look like. Yeah. If you want, um, if you want to be the first one, and then I'm probably going to try to do this with Mood and other people. I think I probably need like two or three more days and then I'll be done doing my whole write-up on this. I kind of want to walk through like basically everything that happened from start to finish. And then I'll ask beforehand, like, what are your opinions on this? And then afterwards I'll ask, you know, do, were you moved on anything or what were the most important pieces to you? And then once I've gone through that process with hopefully like five or six neutral parties, um, I'll probably try to make like a 10 to 15 minute video condensing what I think are the most important points. Yeah. I mean, sure. I don't know how much help I could be, like how much insight I could really provide to you. But Well, a ton, because if I you're do. kind of like a, a neutral-ish third party, then yeah, I can walk through. Because like there are things that matter a lot to me, because uh, having like been involved in this, I'm like, this is the worst thing ever. But there might be other people who are like, oh, I guess that's kind of bad, but I don't even know why that's that bad. But this other thing, I actually thought this was way worse, and I might not have even thought of that. I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't even know that was as big a deal to some people. So it's just good yeah, to If you need a, a normie opinion, I'm in, dude. I can do it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'll be looking for. Yeah, you, I'll probably hit up. I'll try to hit up Muda and yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Canadian dude, fucking hell yeah. Well, all you fucking or not you, what, but you all the all the Canadian the motherfuckers. All, I mean, bro, Canadians are real interested in our <laughs> politics. Okay, I don't know why. Right, Jesus. Uh, all right. So the other thing I got is uh, some questions about like the Supreme Court stuff. Like the majority opinion um, was ultimately. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to recall here. I just want to make sure I phrase this right. Correct me if I get. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. For which, um, for which the case? The Supreme Court. For the immunity. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. The majority opinion was that they never had a president come under criminal charges before. So that's the reason they ended up like a lot. Like this is logically where it would always end up is how I interpreted a lot of their opinion. And um, when I see like conservative people talk about the majority opinion mm -hmm. uh, and why like they stand by and why they agree with it is they always point to uh, like an Obama drone strike that ended up killing like an American. Yeah. And I, I guess I'm trying to understand like, like I feel like I, I sort of am understanding a point there, but I don't under, I don't get it. You don't get the point they're making. Like, like I kind of get the point they're making, but I can't like, the point, the point that they're making is they're saying, okay, this is what they're saying, okay? Um, I'll do the... This they're is saying the, Obama could be, like, charged for that. For yeah, her. yeah. This is the informal argument, okay? The point that they're thinking is, 
wow, we're going to start criminally charging presidents. You do understand that, like, all presidents have probably committed some crimes. For instance, Barack Obama literally assassinated a U.S. citizen. Where is his due process? Um, like, they, they didn't arrest him. They didn't announce charges. They just assassinated him. So if you want to start charging presidents for crimes, how the could you let somebody like Obama assassinate a U.S. citizen? That's like basically the the informal so, version of that. So argument. I get it, but like also, I mean, surely that also doesn't make any sense. Like seeing that he's the fucking president and the commander in chief of the military. Well, what do you mean by it? what doesn't make sense? Do you think that the commander in chief of the military should be able to assassinate U.S. citizens? No, no. But if it's just part of like a, he happened to be there and they didn't know, then well, they did know. Surely <laughs> they went some... after that guy. I think didn't they? I'm pretty sure they explicitly targeted that guy. No, I'm I'm 99 percent sure they what? did. What? Yeah, yes, a U.S. citizen. Yes. You're just controlling me. No, no way. I'm not trolling you. So what is the reason then? Um, well, the reason was he joined. He was working with was it the Taliban? Didn't they call him like Taliban John or something? Um, he 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 was working. You have to be f***ing with me, bro. There is no shot. Hold on. Um, oh, you're a fucking liar, dude. I'm not lying. Yeah, formal name, Taliban John. They, I thought they had like a nickname for him. <sighs> Hold on. Oh, was it Jihadi John? It sounds like I'm trolling you right now. Okay? What are you talking about? <laughs> There's no shot. So the government gave him the nickname Jihadi John? No, 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 no. This is like a media thing, I think. It's not this. Okay, I'm sending you a link. The Jihadi John guy, I think, was a different guy. I'm sorry. It was, I think it might have been this guy. According to the U.S. Okay. government, um, Abdul Rahman al Awaki's al um, Aulaki's father. Dude, he uh, looks like he's like 15. He's 16, he's yeah. 16, Jesus. Um, Anwar Al-Aulaki was a leader of Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, Anwar was killed by a CIA drone strike several days before his son's death. The U.S. drone strike that killed Al-Aulaki was conducted under a policy approved by U.S. President Barack Obama. Oh, no, no, wait. This guy wasn't intentionally targeted, then. It would have been his dad that was intentionally targeted. Oh, I just did a fake news. Wait, wait, was his dad a U.S. citizen? Hold on. Okay, he was a U.S. citizen. Yeah, okay. The reason why I said I was 99.9% .9 sure was because I'm almost positive that Obama went to the OLC, the Office of Legal Counsel, to see if this strike would be legal. And he wouldn't need to do that if it was just like a random guy. Okay, sorry, here, hold on. Forget the kid, all right? He died. That was a mistake. This is the guy that was targeted. Uh, but this guy was, uh, this guy was a U.S. citizen who was targeted and killed by a drone strike from the U.S. government, okay? Okay, so in that case, does the Supreme Court, uh, court ruling make sense then? Um, No. But why? Because then, if you could, pro it, like, it just sounds insane to me that you'd be able to prosecute the the president for. I mean, I guess that's the point of the the whole fucking ruling. Then that, that that does make sense. To protect the president from doing presidential duties. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. I might not be one hundred percent on all this. Okay, but I think I'm close enough. Okay. All right. In the United States of America, okay, when it comes to a criminal conviction, have you ever heard of the term mens rea? Uh, no. Well, I've heard the term. I sure. don't know what it means. Okay, fine. Um, I think there's actus reus as well, I think even in U.S. law. Generally, crimes require an act of the crime, and then it requires a criminal intent, right, in order to be charged yeah. with a crime. That criminal intent or the criminal state of mind is the mens rea, and you have to prove that as proving the criminal conviction. And the mens rea element of a crime, um, element meaning it's a required part for conviction, an element means that it has to be there for the conviction to happen, is um, something that the court has to prove 
and it, it, and and even if it sounds like complicated legal jargon, intuitively we understand this to be the case, right? Let's say there was a kid run or there was a guy you're running outside and uh, you accidentally trip and fall, and when you trip and fall, you know, uh, um, a knife flies out of your pocket and stabs somebody, right? You wouldn't treat this the same as if you'd thrown a knife at somebody, right? I mean, you could still get. I mean, you could still get charged the same, right? It's like no, a DUI well, accident where you kill someone. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, but so what you just said, charged as an accident, right? If you accidentally kill somebody, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. It would be like manslaughter or maybe second degree homicide. Different states have different words for it, right? But the mens rea for those lesser crimes might just show that um, the mens rea, the state of mind for that crime, might be you were acting with uh, reckless disregard for human life, or you were acting recklessly. You should have known better, basically, right? So like the the um, the mens rea for like first degree murder is you are intentionally with premeditation trying to murder somebody, trying to deprive somebody of their life. That's what you're doing. You, 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 know, you grab a gun, you walk to the other room, you know that when you shoot a person with a firearm, you're gonna kill them and you wanna do it and you do it, right? That's like a murder, right? As opposed to right. say you're at the gun range and a guy's running down range and you know, you're with a bunch of friends and you think you can shoot the targets anyway to scare the friend and then he gets hit, Okay, yeah, you clearly you've committed a crime, first degree murder though, or attempted, uh, you know, like murder, probably not, but you're going to get catch a crime because the mens rea, your criminal intent wasn't to try to murder the guy, but you were doing something that would make you likely to, to be, uh, to, to have a criminal charge, right? Well then, well, then in that case, the, the argument that more, uh, oh, wait, 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 Ben Shapiro just, made about, okay, wait, for, ignore, don't ever, 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 ever. No, so I'm going to give the argument because that's the other side. No, no, so I understand. Go I understand. But before we get there, let me just, wait, wait, before we, yeah, wait, we're building towards it. Okay. I just want to make sure you understand right there. Um, you understand right there that the mens rea component, that element is essential for any criminal conviction, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. When the president of the United States. Okay, by, by essential, you mean always considered. Like always, it has to be there. An element has to be there. Yes. Well, right. Or, well, I mean, no, I mean, okay. So. God, I don't want to get into semantics. No, 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 no. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Don't call it semantics. It's essential. You have, this is really important. So it's not just semantics. It's very, very important. So yeah, go ahead. Ask so a question. Yeah. If I, can we go back to the drunk driving example? If I get in a drunk driving accident, I kill somebody, I yep. can still be charged with manslaughter, right? Correct. But you'll never be charged with murder, but you could be charged with so, manslaughter. Yes. And that's not okay. It's not okay. That's not murder. Correct. No, manslaughter is not murder. Correct. Okay. And if you All want, right. um, you can look up. So when you look up criminal codes, you know how it'll say like, oh, this is like a class A misdemeanor, class B or class A felony or class B felony or whatever, right? Generally, yeah. it goes up like the, like if you look up like um, like first degree murder, uh, Florida, the, usually these things, do they use the classes in all states? I think they do. This is like a, a class A felony. Um, manslaughter will always be like a lesser charge than murder, right? Um, it's bad. Manslaughter is bad, but it's always going to be not as bad as murdering somebody. Do you understand? Right. No, that makes sense. Okay. I'm caught up. Okay. All right. So the president of the United States has a whole bunch of jobs available to him. Um, that, that he has to execute on, right? One of those jobs is he's the commander in chief of our armed forces, right? Mm -hmm. When the president is acting as the commander in chief of our armed forces, all right, let's say that he takes an action as the commander in chief of the armed forces to kill somebody. So the actus reus, the action is there. He's ordered somebody to be killed. That's like ordering a hit on somebody, right? However, what would we say about like the mens rea component? Like his criminal is, state of mind. Well, it's not, dude, that, how is it criminal if it's a government operation to, to do the thing? Exactly. Now, if they're like a terror organization, how is it criminal? Exactly, yes, yes, that's correct, yes. So when the president is acting in his official role as president, right, it, it's hard to imagine you'd ever even bring a criminal charge because well, hold on. Look at the look at the mens rea component for what he's doing. He's acting as his role as president, as his job. And if you want, and because your mens rea can be ascertained by a variety of other things. Um, so, for instance, uh, like in criminal court, I wish I could remember the case, but like there was a girl that she killed her mom, and then immediately afterwards she tried to like hide all the evidence. Well, people would say, well, that plays to her mens rea. She knew that she did something wrong. She can't claim that she was just crazy or had an accident or temporary thing. Look, she know she's knowingly doing wrong stuff because now she's trying to. Cover it up. That speaks to her mens rea, her state of mind, right? For the president, if he's performing his official 
duties, but we can look at other things that he's doing, right? So in the um, in the in the in the in the executive branch, um, can I can I cut ahead. you off? Yeah, go ahead, go go go. Okay, so what you just said though, what you just said was, isn't that the same as the consenting opinion in the Supreme Court ruling? No, the president's do when the president's doing his official duties. No, I mean that's the same thing. It's just written out. It's no. not even close. Okay, and I can explain why. Okay. We can look at the president of the United States, we can look at the actions that he's doing, and we can ascertain by what he's done generally, but we can also look at the other actions he's doing. So for instance, for Obama, before he went to drone strike somebody, and this is incredibly common, you've got an, imp an entire Department of Justice, which is the legal part um, of, the, of the executive branch that exists under the president. You've got the Office of Legal Counsel, which gives legal advice to the president. And you've got like the White House lawyers that also give legal advice to the president. If the president goes to all of these people to do legal checks like Obama did before this drone strike, and then he does a particular action, you can tell that like, okay, yeah, everything's probably on the up and up. Like he's, he's doing what he can to make sure that he's staying within the bounds of the law and then he's performing an action and that's good. Okay. We want, we want to see that. That's a good thing. Okay. What the Supreme Court has said is the Supreme Court has said that when the president is acting in his, in, in the things that only he can do, that he needs to do, those things are now beyond criminal review. We can never, ever, ever ask questions about why the president did those things insofar as uh, criminal convictions are concerned. So let me go back to the, are you following me so far? Yep. Okay, so let me go back. The reason why people don't criminally charge Obama isn't because we've assumed that the president is beyond criminal charges. It's because the presidents have probably acted as though they could be criminally liable, but they do a whole bunch of legal checks before they do a particular thing first. But let's say that Obama, instead of ordering the assassination of this guy in Yemen, what if Obama ordered the assassination of a guy who his wife cheated on him with? Do you think that that should be given the same pass as him ordering the assassination of a terrorist in Yemen. No, absolutely not. But wouldn't wouldn't the argument then be that that wouldn't be an official act? It would be though. What's the duty? difference? Why would it become not an official duty just because he targets a different person? I mean, this this is hard. Now this becomes a hard conversation because this goes where I was going to say earlier. This is like essentially the the Ben Shapiro argument where it it is now up to the courts to determine that now, right? What ben Shapiro makes act? arguments about this. Ben Shapiro is a hack f fraud. Okay. Well, okay, but for me, no, 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 okay, wait, wait, hold on. I, I can explain. Him, Stop. Dude. Let me explain this. Okay. The reason why I say that is because a court can no longer make that determination. They can't. They're not allowed to even question it. No, but it says in the rule in the reading from what I re I mean, unless I'm remembering wrong, it says in the reading from the con uh, con I, whatever the the main opinion, the majority opinion that uh, it's up to the courts to determine what that is, no? Um, what What is? What counts as an official act on a case by, is it? Mm. I mean, I don't know if it says case by case, but it does say that in there. I'm almost certain, no? So what the court has said is there are three different types of actions that a president can take, okay? But the court, the court invented these three categories of actions. One is Roberts talks about a core power, okay? which just means that it's an action that only the president can take, that he needs to take, okay, to do his job. These things are beyond criminal review, full stop, okay? That's just completely thrown out the window, all right? Um, so for an example of this, have you read it all about like um, Trump trying yeah, to- Yeah, they, they made like a flow chart, didn't they? No, 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 they didn't. Those are other things. Ignore everything you've read about this, okay? Just listen to me, I'm the only person you can trust in those okay. okay? But then you can go, <laughs> not, you can read afterwards. You can go, I'm serious, okay? A lot of people talk about this and they get this really, really, really wrong. Ben Shapiro gets this really wrong. And every conservative commentator is talking about this is really wrong. Um, I'm serious. But also if you if you wanna go- well, I can't just take your opinion because it's you, bro. If you don't, if you don't take my saying? opinion for it, then I would say at least read I'm, the I'm syllabus. I'm just hearing you out. I'm just hearing no, you yeah, out. No, yeah, yeah, you can, okay, yeah, okay. Okay, I'm just saying be very, very careful with this, okay? Well, here's what I'm saying, okay? Sure. One is, okay, you've got core powers. Only, okay, these are things that are, Roberts calls these, I think, preclusive and exclusive, or preclusive and conclusive. Basically, these are the things that only the president can do that's been expressly delegated to the president. Of those core powers, all of those are beyond criminal review. Nobody can touch them, nobody can look at them, and you can't even use them as evidence towards other crimes. The so, two, go ahead. I was gonna say, the main concerning part to me was, 
uh, and this came from one of the, the dissenting opinions was uh, from the judges, was that you couldn't even use evidence if it came from like an official act, like him talking to an advisor, like to determine motive. Correct. And that's the that to me is the spookiest part because that right. I mean, part of me thinks that because it reads in the most like plain English. Yeah. Um, but so there's also like issues where understand. like so, for instance, if the president was taking bribes to pardon people, pardoning is a power granted to the president explicitly and only he can do it. Congress can't do pardons. So because of that, the president could take bribes for uh, pardons and you would never be able to really challenge that in criminal court. Roberts basically says wouldn't, wouldn't that. that need to be argued. And then that. No, have, have no, no, no. OK, OK, listen, it? listen. There, OK, there's three buckets. OK, the first is core powers. There is no arguing there. That's done. It's over. You can't argue about that. OK, the second one is what you're thinking of. OK, and this is the one that conservatives obsess over. The second bucket is called. Um, uh, pre, uh, so the, in the first category of actions, the core it's powers. It's like presumed yeah, yeah. presidential the, duty. Yep. Yeah, the first core powers things are, is granted absolute immunity. All right. Meaning that you can't look at um, you can't look at any of those actions. You can't um, look at the intention for those actions. You can't use them in other criminal charges. You just can't review them at all. Okay. The second thing, there's a category of actions, and these are called official acts as president. Um, that maybe Congress could also take as well. I guess there might be some overlap. These are given something called presumptive immunity. Okay. Now, when Robert says these have presumptive immunity, what Robert says is that if you want to bring charges to a president. What the government first has to show, and when I say government, I mean like the, the prosecuting body, they have to show that if you were to charge a president with these crimes relating to this action, you have to prove first that doing so won't harm the executive's ability to function in the future because now they're looking over their back all the time for criminal charges. And conservatives will try to say that like, oh yeah, so like, look, there's just a few things that are like presumptively immune and it's not a big deal. Now you've got all these unofficial acts, but the problem is that presumptive immunity bucket could theoretically encompass every oh, single on, action on, that a president yeah, takes. Kinda... Okay, my bad, yeah. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay, continue. You the, have a bunch the, of- uh, Yeah, the problem is that presumptively immune category could theoretically encompass every single action that a president could take. Right. So that's no, that's not like a thing where it's like, oh, that sounds scary, but we got to wait to figure that out. That's something that's already determined. In my saying. opinion, that's well, in my opinion, the absolute immunity category was already really scary. One is because a president mm -hmm. has never, it's never been understood that a president is immune from criminal prosecution ever. And every citation that Roberts gives is dog shit, number one. And number two, um, the issue is that, um, are you familiar at all with uh, with the whole Rosen, Donahue, Clark, Trump stuff? I have no clue who that is. Okay, so without getting too deep into this, Donald Trump went to his two, his attorney general and his deputy attorney general, so the two highest people in the Department I, of Justice. Yeah, I think I actually have read about this. Yeah, I Donald Trump basically said, listen, I want you guys, and then he used another guy in the DOJ called Jeffrey Clark, I want you to send a, a letter to uh, seven states that's lying. Saying yeah, that, I, yeah. yeah I've, mm -hmm. I've read about this. This is listed out in the, uh, in the, indictment. the indictment. In the indictment, correct. And yeah. Donald Trump said that if you don't do this, I'm going to fire you, basically, kind of, more or less, right? Well, Robert yeah. said that that action in particular is beyond review. He declared that criminally immune. So he says that laid out right there in the, the Supreme Court doc? Correct. Explicitly, yes. He says that that action is beyond review. I can read the quote for you if you'd like. So you, if you can't don't. determine motive from that then. Correct. Yeah, can you pull up the quote just for the. the yeah, absolutely. Exhibit? Hmm. Yeah, this is fucked up. Um, okay, give me uh, like two minutes to try to find this. Yeah, take your time. His legal eagle's opinion was something was very similar to yours on this and in his interpretation. Legal eagle is generally correct. Okay, let me read you this. Okay, ready? Uh, okay, I'm gonna read you. <laughs> What? Uh, it's just funny to me that you're like, yep, that lawyer is correct. It's like, bro, you aren't a lawyer. What the fuck? Okay, here's the thing that you have to understand, okay? Don't trust me. Ask other lawyers about this. Lawyers are the highest, um, like, uh, hubris to education person of anybody that's ever existed. They have, their opinions are, are way too 
uh, taken seriously and they take themselves way more seriously. Mm -hmm. Fuck, that you got to cut off. Hello? Hello? Okay. Okay, you said lawyers are the highest? They Lawyers think way too highly of themselves, okay? They're most... Most lawyers are going to be, it's going to be like anything in computer programming. If they work there and that's been their job for some time, then they've got a good opinion about it. But a lawyer is not immediately endowed with all the information of every legal process on, right? Like, mo like, yeah, of course. Yeah. Most lawyers that are, have been working in certain areas aren't going to be able to pass like a civil procedure class, okay? Like five years out of law school, okay? Like, just as a heads up, okay? So um, now that being said, okay, I'm a random retard on the internet. You don't have to necessarily take my word for it. But let, let me just say this, okay? And this, this applies to every single person, every single educated person in life, Willie. Okay? Are you listening to me? No, I know. I Listen. didn't mean to be that critical. It just comes oh, no, no, off no, that's as fine. funny. No, no, that's I know. I saying. understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. Okay. And it does come off as funny. It should, okay? But here's what I'm saying, okay? If somebody is educated on a particular topic, then they will beat you over the head with their knowledge on that topic. If somebody's trying to beat you over the head with the credentials, that means that the credentials they have are, didn't give them the education they needed to win the argument. Just always give them that, okay? All right. Let yeah, me, um, okay. It's like Boogie's brother. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to read you a few paragraphs and explain, okay? Ready? So that you have mm -hmm. the context for this. Okay. The indictment broadly alleges that Trump and his co-conspirators sought to overturn the legitimate results of the 2020 presidential election. It charges that they conspired to obstruct the January 6th congressional proceeding at which electoral votes are counted and certified, and the winner of the election is certified as president-elect. As part of this conspiracy, Trump and his co-conspirators allegedly attempted to leverage the Justice Department's power and authority to convince certain states to replace their legitimate electors with Trump's fraudulent slates of electors. OK, so he's saying here that part of what they're accused of doing is using the Justice Department to lie. Right. Yes. OK. According to the indictment, Trump met with the acting attorney general and other senior Justice Department and White House officials to discuss investigating purported election fraud and sending a letter from the department to those states regarding such fraud. The indictment further alleges that after the acting attorney general resisted Trump's requests, Trump repeatedly threatened to replace him. So this is talking about how Trump was telling Donahue and Rosen. Yeah, that he'd fire him. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to fire you guys if you don't send out this letter that you're saying is bullshit, that we all know is bullshit, lying about voter fraud, okay? Yeah, I, re I remember this. Okay. The government does not dispute that the indictments, whenever you're reading a Supreme Court case and they say the government, or at least in this part, when they say the government, they're talking about the prosecution, not like all of Congress, not the, they're talking about like the, the prosecutors here, right? Make sense, like Jack oh, Smith. Okay. Okay. Sure. The government, so Jack Smith, the prosecution, does not dispute that the indictment's allegations regarding the Justice Department involves Trump's use of official power. The alley, so they're saying, obviously, Jack Smith isn't saying that Trump doesn't have the power to fire people, right? The allegations, in fact, plainly implicate Trump's, quote, conclusive and preclusive, end quote, authority. In, uh, and then quoting, investigation and prosecution of crimes is a quintessentially executive function, meaning that obviously, right, in the executive branch, control of the Department of Justice and their investigation of crimes, that's obviously something that only the president and the executive branch can, can do, okay? Right. And the executive branch has exclusive authority and absolute discretion to decide which crimes to investigate and prosecute, including with respect to allegations of election crime. The president may discuss potential investigations and prosecutions with his attorney general and other Justice Department officials to carry out his con constitutional duty to take care that the laws be faithfully executed. And the attorney general, as head of the Justice Department, acts as the president's chief law enforcement officer who provides vital assistance to him in the performance of his constitutional duty to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. So all Roberts is saying is that, like, obviously, this is the role of the president. This is the role of the attorney general. This is what he does. Right. Fuck. Sorry. Hello. 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 Are you on your phone? No, dude. My fucking Discord computer sucks right now. I don't know why it's doing that. Jesus, so I, I did hear most of that because okay. I have your stream open as yeah, well. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So he's just describing like what the president does in the executive branch, right? Okay. Right, right. Two, okay. Two more Continue. paragraphs, then we're done. Okay. Investigative and prosecutorial decision making is the special province of the executive branch, and the Constitution vests the entirety of the executive power in the president. 
For this reason, Trump's threatened removal of the acting attorney general likewise implicates conclusive and preclusive presidential authority. As we have explained, the president's power to remove executive officers of the United States whom he has appointed, that's just like your head of all the department, your executive officers, yep. okay, may not be regulated by Congress or reviewed by the courts. The president's management of the executive branch requires him to have unrestricted power to remove the most important of his subordinates, such as the attorney general, in their most important duties. The indictment's allegations that the requested investigations were shams or proposed for an improper purpose do not divest the president of exclusive authority over the investigative and prosecutorial functions of the Justice Department and its officials. In, um, and the president cannot be prosecuted for conduct within his exclusive constitutional authority. Trump is therefore absolutely immune from prosecution for the alleged conduct involving his discussions with Justice Department officials. Okay, did you get all of that so far? Yes. Yeah, so okay, now wait, 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 wait. Before, okay, just so I just want you to okay. keep this in mind real quick, okay? Because a lot of people, so here's an argument, counter argument, and why it's so stupid. A lot of the arguments that have been given by a lot of people, including uh, Justice Sotomayor in this and her dissenting opinion, is people say, what if Donald Trump orders a hit? SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political opponent. And the, the standard conservative response, Ben Shapiro and every other hack fuck Harvard loser lawyer who's defending Trump gives the same explanation. They say, well, uh, excuse me, assassinating U.S. citizens for personal grudges, that's not, an that's not a, a, a power, a core power of the president, so this example is foolish. However, as I've just read to you, okay, using the DOJ to launch sham investigations and then lie to states about it, that's also not a core function of the president. But because it implicates some of his core powers, like hiring and firing people in the DOJ or discussing investigations potentially with the DOJ, it's been ruled absolutely immune. That's why that assassination in all attempt. Circumstances. And also what? In all circumstances is what you're saying? Yes. That's what that's what Roberts has said. So this this wow. conversation is beyond review now, meaning that a court can never look at it ever. No prosecutor can touch it. It's beyond. It can't be used as evidence as motive anything. for anything else. Correct. Yes. Uh yeah, that's fucking crazy. So they just ignore all that, huh? So they well, they I take that back. They don't ignore it. They just don't acknowledge it. What do you mean by don't? Who is they? And what do you mean by acknowledge? So I've watched uh, a couple of conservative lawyers. I forget their name, but just to hear like what their opinions were on it, and of course Ben. Which please don't go on another rant about him. I get it. Uh, they don't acknowledge that he can't have like his conversations with staff don't count as uh, can't be used as evidence. They, they do. Only they focus say on like the murder. No, no. They say that. They say that they can't be used as evidence. Correct. No, no, no. But ben, specifically Ben Shapiro and the conservative lawyers, they don't ever like talk about that when they review the Supreme Court case. Like Ben's got a 50 minute video talking about it. They probably he, don't he, talk he, about it, but Robert's rationale for that. Okay. Which is no, ridiculous. No, I understand Robert's. No, 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 I'm wait, you don't, you don't, you don't. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll tell you. And then this, if you were to question them, this is what they would say. What Robert says is, okay, well, if you could use the president's official things that he's got criminal immunity from, if you could use those as evidence for other crimes, well, that defeats the whole purpose of the immunity. So that's why we're not going to even let you bring them up as evidence for other crimes. So I don't even know how many of these other guys actually read the case, but that's Robert's explanation. And they would likely give the same explanation if they were pushed, if they've read the case. Yeah, that makes sense. Fuck. That's crazy, bro. Also, as a real quick thing, because some people say this, and it's not true. So I saw there's a, I've got a super trumpet on my kick chat. He says the House and Senate can use it to impeach him. Then the courts can go after him. That's not true. No, no, bar, no part about that is true. And the court explicitly. Why would said, they ever impeach him too? If, sure. If it's a split. Uh, yeah, of course. That, there's that as well. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I don't fucking like. What's the point of even talking about impeachment when it just wouldn't happen? I mean, unless he like fucking nuked a city or some crazy shit. I suppose. Sure. Yeah. Um, let's see if I got anything, any other questions. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. So I guess my main problem with the, with conservatives when it comes to just even acknowledging uh, the Jan 6 stuff is one, they were they will rarely ever acknowledge the electoral scheme, mm -hmm. which is why I think a lot of people, like a lot of normies don't even uh, understand like that it happened. Yeah. I agree. Um, because it's it's not really acknowledged anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like, when did you know it was a thing? Because I just watched a video of, like, you on Jubilee from, like, six months ago. 
uh, and you seem to not have the same stance you do now? Um, it was probably about a year ago. It was pretty recent that I like really dug into it all and learned it. Um, it might have even been in preparation for another debate I had, maybe with um, maybe my Alex Jones Greenwald debate, which would have been January sixth, twenty twenty four. So yeah, my big problem with a lot of them is, and it, this happened in your Twitter argument, is that essentially the defense for for Trump's electoral fraud is that it didn't work. So who cares? Yeah, that's retarded, though. Like, there is a crime of attempted murder, right? It is fucking retarded, right? Yes. I just don't understand how that's the best possible defense you could come up with. It's unbelievable. Yeah. If you listen to my long-form conversation with Ben Shapiro, I bring this up, and Ben Shapiro says his, his response to me is that, well... Oh, fuck, hold on. Yeah? Okay, go. You bring this yeah. up. Yeah, Ben Shapiro's response to me was, well, the guardrails held, so that's okay. That's that's an insane argument. Yeah, that's in, that's unhinged. It's like say, yeah, it's like going into a room and like some guy tries to shoot you and you're like it's chill. I've got a bulletproof vest on, so I'm fine. It's okay. I mean, even it, me. even if it goes like he like even if it does go to the courts, like he would say, uh, and and Biden gets ruled and and it, everything goes as normal after that. I mean, it's still insane to fucking back this guy going a second run at, or the third run, I guess, at presidency run. Yeah, it's yeah, that's it's. Insane. Because what would, what would you expect somebody to do if the guardrails held the first time? Well, they're probably going to... Also, to be clear, okay, and I am an, I am an institutional shill, and if anybody doesn't like that, I'll fight them to the death, and I don't give a fuck. When people talk about the guardrails holding, the guardrails that held were bureaucrats. That's Those were the guardrails. It was people that had a long-term relationship... Bureaucrats being... being like with Mike and Pence, in government. What? Bureaucrats, you just mean Mike Pence? No, I mean long term. I mean that when, when Donald Trump was going to fire his attorney general and his deputy attorney general and put Clark in instead to send out that fake letter, the AG and the deputy AG, along with White House legal counsel, um, Pat, uh, um, it was Pat Cipollone, Cipollone and um, uh, Phil. Ah, oh, fuck. And another guy. They they went and they contacted all of the associate attorney generals and they were like, hey, just so you guys know, we might be getting fired soon because we don't want to sign on to some bullshit fake ass letter. And basically half the Justice Department threatened to quit when Donald Trump was considering that. And when they went to their big White House meeting, they told him that. And 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 Trump asked Engel and a couple of his own people was like, yeah, wait, what's going to happen here if I actually kick this guy out? And they're like, yeah, half of your Justice Department is walking out. Half the people are going to quit on you. This is an unhinged what you're thinking of doing. And the, these the, were the Justice people that helped align on this. Being yeah. like his cabinet? No, 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 no. Does, um, so what is what is the fucking Justice Department? Um, <laughs> what yeah. the fuck is that? So you've got something called, okay, so in the United States, you've got three branches of government, right? You've got- Right, I understand that. Sure. Well, here, let me, I'll explain real quick, okay? Because people think they do, but they don't always, okay? So you've got Congress. Congress makes laws or statutes, right? And then mm -hmm. you've got, when you, when you pass a law or a statute, okay, laws don't mean anything. If you pass a law, who the fuck cares? You need somebody to punish you for it if you break the law. Yeah, right? the presidential branch. That's what the executive branch the executive. is for. Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay. And then the judicial branch um, is there for, it's called statutory construction or interpretation. They just make sure that the laws are being interpreted correctly by everybody the, and that everybody's playing so, by the so role, right? what position is in that, though? In, in what? The Justice Department. What is that? Yeah, so the, so the Department of Justice, DOJ, is an office that's created in the executive branch, okay? So the executive branch, the executive, ideally, okay, in a perfect world, the president of the United States is one man that can do everything. He's every FBI agent, he's every federal regulator, he can just run around and do everything. But in the real world, the, the president can't do everything, right? He's just one man. So what yeah. Congress does is Congress authorizes, they create offices for the president to help him with his duties. And one of the most important offices that exists under the president is the Department of Justice. And the Department of Justice is the body that does investigations and law enforcement Enforcement, I believe, because like the FBI exists under that as well, um, under the president of the United States. So that's what the Department of Justice is. So think of like the attorney general is like the lead, the biggest prosecutor guy kind of in the United States for the no, federal no, government. Yeah, I know who the attorney general is. So is the, D is the Department of Justice like, uh, is that the attorney general? Yes, the attorney general is the head, is the officer, the head officer, the top guy in the Department of Justice. Okay. So he, so that's a guy who, remember, officers, the cabinet members, the head people of all the offices in uh, the executive branch, those get nominated by the president, and then the Senate confirms them, right? 
So appointed with the advice and consent of the yeah, Senate. Like the and Department the Department of Education and all that shit, right? Um, per, maybe. The Department of Education might exist under another department. I can check for it. But, but you've got the right idea. If it does exist under another department, if it doesn't, then there's going to be a head officer in the Department of Education who the president appoints um, and then the Senate confirms. Or the, D, or the Department of Education might exist under another department and then he would uh, appoint the head of that department. But basically, yes. Okay, so half of them decided to quit. In the DOJ, yes. Correct. All right, all right. Yeah, okay. Well, fuck, man. Thank you. This was uh, a lot of information I got to have Brienne now. Yeah, you're good. Look further into. Yep. If you want, um, well, he, so this is my plan, and then you can tell me if you think this is good or not or how you would change it, right? So I've almost finished writing up basically everything that happened between all of the fake election fraud claims, all the stuff leading up to J6 basically, and then what happens on J6 and then after. So what I want to do is talk to basically a bunch of kind of like normie people and then run them through all of this to see what changes their opinion the most, what doesn't, what's important, what needs more explaining. And then after I've done that like five or six times, I'll try to make like a short like 10 to 15 concise, 10 to 15 minute concise video explaining everything. Um, do you think I should do this with like one person at a time or should I grab like three people at a time? Like would it be better to run through all of this with you and then Mudahar and then somebody else or should I just have like five of you all on the same call and run it down or what do you think? How would you how would you structure that if you were trying to do that? Um, I would go ahead and I, I would allow the video to be like a watch party but then I'd, I'd tell people to give you feedback in like two days. If that makes sense. Like, let them, let them sit it over. Because odds are a lot of the, like, real criticism they could come to you uh, in terms of fixing the video is going to be stuff they're, like, mulling over in their head because it's, it's so much fucking information for somebody that doesn't understand a whole, like, how any of this worked beforehand. Sure, yeah. Yeah, because there's also stuff that I think has to be explained for people to even understand. Because a lot of, yeah, it, I, yeah it, most it, people in the United States, less than probably 5% of the population even knows what, like, an elector is, I think. Yeah. For like I a, mean, yeah, like I, I knew like uh, we had like electorates, but I didn't know it was literally like people just put up. Sure, like, I, yeah. did, I, I wasn't really sure how any of that fucking worked. And then the uh, the other part was it would be, um, I mean, fuck, dude, it it's a it's a big task, like this whole thing. What do you mean by a big? What do you mean by that? Like just trying to cover like all this fucking ground. Oh, maybe I think it could be covered. Like I, I would say you'd almost like need to. Um, in a way, like you have to show like some of the the opposing positions too. Sure. Yeah, I can. Like, yeah, you, I can cover like it, yeah. You, you know, just sort of like the default points. Like if if the fucking default conservative point is it didn't work, so who cares? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's worth like bringing up. You know. Um. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Let's say also the on videos that are fucking like in, in in my experience videos involving like stand topics like topics whether it's like people that are really big fans and they're all emotionally invested in all that shit. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say like in those sort of videos, the tone of the video matters more than anything. So the video doesn't need to be polite; it doesn't have to be like a fucking nice video. But if the if the video's tone is, uh, this is fun. This is us uncovering an investigation mystery shit. Well, that's a lot more compelling yeah and, and compelling and then like yeah and compelling than like oh here's this fucking angry lib like going on a fucking rant <laughs> you know like mm. nobody wants to hear that like people like make it like a, it's a fucking mystery we're diving in like there's some fun ways to to frame this that makes it uh because you're never going to convince like a like pr probably like half the problem i have with watching some debates mm -hmm. and this isn't like a you problem this is just the the problem with people not putting forth a good faith debate, right? Is you're never going to convince him. Your your goal is to convince the masses, right? All the people that that don't know and that are able to be swayed. You're yeah, never going to convince the, the the approach uh, I'll have for like a debate versus like a prepared video or something is going to be way, way, way different, of course. Right, yeah. right. So if you if you don't want to you tone is a big factor in videos like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well anything else? No, thank you. I'd say thank you, man. All right. I love you. Be careful. It was a complicated conversation, oh. so I appreciate it. I might call you again if I got questions. Yeah. Have you done anything? Um, have you looked at any of the Mr. Beast shit coming out now? Uh, so I'm so deep in, like, the fucking boogie shit and then this stuff. Like, I do have, like, it on my back burner, but I don't really know, like, that deep of how it's all gone. Like, I've seen, like, people on Twitter saying, like, 
Chris apparently sent his cock into like a fucking Discord. Like I don't, I don't know how true any of that is. But Did you watch uh, the big video that's about a, like the pretty big deal, the lottery allegations and all that shit? Or oh, uh, it just sounds fucking stupid. Like saying that all the Mr. Beast videos are staged. Okay, all right, just curious. I feel I feel like that would have leaked before. No, like I get that. I get that. That's not a good. Uh, I guess that's not a good argument. I'd have to look into it, but it just from title alone, it makes me roll my eyes a little bit. Mm-hmm. But who knows? Maybe there's something there. I'd have to look into it. Okay. All right. All right well, take it easy, Dave. Yeah. How we going? Be careful. Deuces, dude. Fuck. I feel like I shouldn't be accepting this guy's debate offer. Uh, I shouldn't be debating these, like, because this is like a Project Veritas guy. I will be debating at the Omni Liberal tonight at 10 p.m. ET tonight about whether J6 was a Fed surrection or an insurrection. It's just going to be, this whole debate is going to be him saying, look at all these federal informed, people that had federally informed before, therefore, uh, it was like, a federal insurrect. That's what it's going to be. Yo, 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 hold on, hold on, one more point. Holding, babe. So, uh, one of the questions I want to go back to, because I don't feel like I got an answer now that I'm looking at uh, my, my notes here, is um, when it comes to debating people about the word, like, insurrection, mm -hmm. why not just, like, is it worth just saying, like, electoral fraud or, like, a, a, like, like attempt to throw out the election? Like, like... I guess I don't understand. Like, I feel like there's a way to circumvent people that won't uh, engage with that word. Because the people that won't engage with the word don't want to engage with the actions. The, be the reason why people don't like the word insurrection is because that what they want to think is that it was just like a random riot that broke out. That's why they don't want to use the word insurrection. Right. So why not say like electoral scheme then? Because then they can't do because that. Because it wasn't just the electoral scheme. That's a weaker version of my argument, which you, I mean, is also, it's okay. I'd ra if people even just argue that, that's fine. But the January 6th violence was premeditated and it was a part of Donald Trump's plan that he both planned and executed on and was partially successful with to try to use violence to enact his elector scheme. That's why it wasn't just a coup. It was a coup and an insurrection or an attempted coup and an insurrection. The violence was a planned part of his strategy. That's what he wanted to happen. It's what he wanted to do. But if there's no if there's no violence, isn't it still insurrection? Well, there I was violence. No, but if like pretend there isn't, was it, wouldn't it still be an insurrection? Um, if you la if you're lacking if you all the illegally put up electors to throw out to illegally throw out the vote, that no, the that, January sixth I mean, part was the was the insurrection. Um, absent all the violence or like crowds of people doing stuff, you would just call that like an attempted coup, basically. What Donald Trump did was an attempted coup. January 6th the, was an- What's the difference between insurrection and coup? I think a coup is when you, um, ooh, okay, hold on. My insurrection definition is very well grounded. My coup one is not as much, but my understanding is, is when you talk about a coup, you're talking about somebody trying to subvert the ordinary process of like choosing leadership. So basically you're, you're holding on to power or you're trying to steal power in an illegitimate manner from a- from some kind of government. That's a coup. You're trying to overthrow the leadership using um, extra legal means or, or illegal means, yeah. I mean, so they, I mean, in layman's terms, they are pretty similar though. No. It's just. So like, for instance, like a coup would be like, um, like let's say Donald Trump, um, like let's say Donald Trump figured out that like if he pushes a button, Biden's like locked in his house and he can't get out. And so Trump just like pushes <laughs> that button and now Biden can't escape his house. And Trump is like sitting in Congress and he's like, oh, uh, Biden didn't show up. I guess I'm still president. That would be like a coup. There is no insurrection. There. There's no violence. No, nothing like that. No crowds of people or anything. That would just be a coup. Yeah. So a coup is the Star Wars meme. What happened in Star Wars? 
No, you never seen Revenge of the Sith where he's like, so this is how democracy dies. Oh, I blanked those all out for Rounding mind. applause. But possibly that, that might have been a coup. I don't remember. Oh, God damn it. Dude, I did. So I saw it. I just been a long time. I don't remember the politics of the prequels. My bad. The po it's the plot of the movie. It's not the. I mean, I guess it is the politics of the prequels, but fucking God, dude. So, okay, run that by me one more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a coup is basically just trying to, like, steal power illegitimately. Doesn't necessarily involve and an violence. Insurrection. And insurrection is like a huge crowd of people are fighting against a contravene or fight against like um, like they're, they're opposing some type of process in the federal government. It doesn't even necessarily have to be for power. Like an insurrection could be um, like there have been historical examples of insurrections where um, the first one, I think the Whiskey Rebellion, was uh, the federal government for the first time, to, tr time tried to pass a tax and a whole group of farmers, I think, didn't like it. They were like, fuck that. So anytime the tax collectors came, they all get, they all rose up and they tried to fight against the tax collectors to send them back. They were resisting that particular um, implementation of federal law, right? That was an insurrection against the government. But they weren't trying to, like, overthrow the government. Because it has to do with, with federal taxes? Yes, because they didn't want that. They didn't want to be federally taxed. So you could have an insurrection that's not a coup? Correct, yes. Insurrection doesn't mean you're trying to overthrow the government. That would be an insurrection that leads to an overthrow of the government or is trying to, you might call, like, a rebellion would, would be when you're, like, levying war against the United States. So an insurrection can be insurrecting against things that aren't just trying to overthrow the government or take power. Okay. Uh, am I satisfied with that? Uh, I guess so for now. The problem with these words, there's a, there's a couple, there's, there's two huge problems. One is that like... The words are so fucking lame. They're such a lame part of this argument, dude. Yeah, well, the problem is that like we just don't really see much of this in the United fucking States. Just look, like, look what he did. Like, I don't fucking... It's so stupid. Um... I having to, to argue like this other shit just feels so fucking dumb. It's why like Muda in that one time call was just like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, no, I mean, like I kind of understand, but just remember that the reason why the word is being argued about is because they can't fight on substance. The, the, they want to argue about the word because if they don't have the word, then they, they don't, they're not, they just want to call it a right and that's it. Right. I'm just trying to think like, I don't even think if I made a video, I would have to engage in like a lot of these fucking words. Yeah, maybe, uh, yeah. I'm just thinking, like, fucking out loud, I guess. You could you could also, like, you could not use the words, and you could just describe what's happening. I wouldn't necessarily be opposed right. to that. Like, That's like if somebody... I, mean. I wouldn't do this as a political commentator, because I feel very strongly about this, but I wouldn't be opposed to somebody said, January 6th was a massive riot where people showed up, and their goal was to try to overthrow the election results, right? If somebody described it that way, I'd be okay with that. But a conservative who's saying, I don't like the word insurrection, they're never describing it as a riot to overthrow the government. They would never say that, right? That's my issue, you know? But if somebody described it that way, I'd be like, yeah, I'll take it, sure. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think I'm, we're all on, like... I'm on the same page where, to me, it all just fucking means the same thing. But I, sure. I get the nuance of it. It's just, in a way, I'm fucking annoyed that it's even a point. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. All right. Thanks, brother. I'll be careful, babe. What a clown.